Hey guys and welcome to my channel. I'm Mello and I recently started collecting anime figures. I've always been into anime but I never thought of collecting figures. When the pandemic happened, I built a work from home setup and I wanted a few figures to personalize it. So I ordered a few and by browsing on Facebook, um, I learned how to pre-order and June of this year is when I really started growing my collection. I only follow one rule in collecting and that's not buying figures. I don't know the source material of. It has to be a character that I like from a show that I've watched or a game that I've played. In terms of budget, I'm not on the level of expensive scale figures. Um, I mainly collect prize figures, uh, pop-up parades, nendoroids and possibly some 1-8 scale figures. So this first video is basically me showing you what I currently have. So let's start! I'll begin with the figures that are on my desk. This is my first ever Nendoroid and it is the Archbishop job class from Ragnarok Online. I used to not like Nendoroids. <laughs> I thought they were um, too finicky, but I gave it a shot and I absolutely love Nendoroids now. This is an older Nendoroid and she was really sticky when I got her. Um, but an advice from a Nendoroid Facebook group um, helped me by giving her a warm soapy bath and she was squeaky clean and brand new um, all over again. Um, I got this second hand from a seller from Japan, um, but it wasn't displayed. Um, the box was opened um, to get the item ticket that came with this that could be used with the Japanese server of the game. Um, it comes with a lot of accessories, but my favorite is this little pouring which makes it nostalgic and makes me want to play the game again. My only complaint is since it has pretty massive volume of hair, a Nendoroid easel stand doesn't work with it. Uh, but overall a super cute figure and I'm really happy to have this. Next figure is a prize figure of my favorite Dragon Ball Z character, Android 17. This is by Ben Presto from their World Figure Coliseum line, which is a figure sculpting competition. I absolutely love this figure from the dashing pose, the hair in the wind, the scarf, the gun holster, the texture and the clothes, it even has a rip on the jeans and also the shoelaces. One thing I would change about this figure is I think the hands are not proportional to the figure. Um, they're a little too big in my opinion. I got this from Geek Love PH through their Shopee store. Third is a pop-up parade of Yuna from Kuma, Kuma Bear. I really enjoyed the anime. It's like a mix of an isekai and a slice of life anime. I'm really excited for season two. Um, I do agree that pop-up parades are a notch higher than price figures. The hair though quite delicate, is superbly detailed. Good Small Company did make a white version of this. In the anime, Yuna can't take off the bear suit, so when she goes to bed at night, she turns it inside out. 
See if you could see the inner lining of the bear suit is white. Um, but I wish they changed the pose on the white version. It basically has the same pose and a different face. Um, if they changed the pose, I would have bought that white version as well. This was a pre-order from Geek Love PH. This time we have a Sega premium figure of Emma from The Promised Neverland. And yes, season two was super disappointing and extremely rushed. Um, but season one was still awesome and was one of those shows that really got me hooked and made me anticipate a new episode every week. The details on this figure are fantastic. I love that she's holding Connie's stuffed toy. Um, she comes with a sofa chair that has an indent on it to guide you in positioning her. There are bootlegs of this figure. Um, I noticed that in the bootlegs, the color of the boots and the laces are the same. And probably another way you can check is on the back of the chair. There is an engraving of Sega China on it and also on, Lemus, on Emma's left foot. And on the right foot, there's like this item code or product code, I guess. Um, I got this from a Shopee store named Figure Reviews. And um, I'm really happy that they did not price this so ridiculously high. Some stores I saw this and was going for like $50 and though a really good figure, it's categorically still a price figure. So it did not need to be $50, um, maybe $30, but not $50. Um, and yeah, it's a super nice figure. The Norman and the Ray ones, I think are more expensive and I'm not getting those. So. If you can find this, it's a really, really nice figure. My mom's actually asking for this, and I just told her she doesn't even know who this is. Um, but it's just a testament of, I guess, how good the figure is. So, The last figures on my desk are these. Give me a sec. These adorable... Petit Chara Sailor Moon figures by Mega House. And honestly, collecting these in 2021 is an absolute nightmare. They are so hard to find, and when you do find them, they can be quite expensive. So I'm really ha happy to have these ones that I have. Um, I have a few more um, displayed by my TV, but these are the main ones I really wanted to get. They are in their Sailor Senshi forms. I am missing Eternal Sailor Moon and Chibi Chibi. So I'm still on the hunt for those. But if I don't get them, I'm, I'm happy with these ones that I have. So the 2020 set with the free drawstring bag I got from Persona Shop Philippines um, Shopee store. Um, I got a special edition Ochitomo set of Usagi and the Three Lights through Red Monster Shop's um, Shopee store. And I got the Haruka and Michiru uh, special edition kind of a wedding set um, from What a Toy is directly from their website. And then everything else I got from Japan. So I think these are a must-have if you are a Sailor Moon fan like myself. I grew up watching Sailor Moon and I absolutely love these. By my TV, I also have a Sika figure of Conan from Case Closed or if you know it more as Detective Conan. There are a lot of Sega Conan figures, but I chose this specific one because number one, I did want to stick him on one of my Bluetooth speakers. So I have him stuck there using double-sided tape. And I also love this pose because it's the pose when he's explaining how the crime happened and basically solving the case. 
By the way, there are two little figures um, hanging by my monitors. Uh, one is Sailor V uh, from Sailor Moon, and the other is a tiny tan monitor figure of Jungkook from BTS. I also have V, but he doesn't want to stick. He always leans and then eventually falls down. So I decided to put him back on his box. And here are some figures that I also have but can't display anymore due to lack of space. This is the first figure I ever bought. And yes, it is a bootleg. <laughs> and I knew, it, I knew it was a bootleg when I got it. And it is of little Nezuko from Demon Slayer. It's so cute and I love how she fits inside the box. And you can display her in multiple ways. Um, the funny thing is I couldn't find the original figure this was based on. Um, the Bank Presto WCF1 doesn't go completely inside the box. Um, the closest one I could find is that huge, probably life-size figure by Fnex or Furyu that's like 500,000 yen. <laughs> And value. Um, I do hope a, some company makes a legit better quality version of this figure because I absolutely love it. I also have a band Presto figure of Senku from Dr. Stone. One of uh, my favorite shows as well. I remember <laughs> when I first got this figure I was so impressed by it like by the sculpt of how much it resembles Senku, but now that I've seen the pop up parade figure and the figure arts zero figure, I don't feel quite the same, <laughs> but I still love the pose. Next is probably one of my top five favorite characters of all time, and it's Rimuru from that time I got reincarnated as a slime. So this is a coin bank from by PLM and I love that it comes with a Shizu's mask which actually covers the coin slot and it comes with my favorite Rimuru expression, this kind of blushing pose. And I think I like Rimuru better in his slime form than in human form. Um, I think it perfectly captures Rimuru's shape and is like a really good figure for any Rimuru fan. I got this from What A Toys PH Shopee store and I believe it's like the second figure that I bought after the bootleg Nezuko one. This is a Noodle Stopper figure by Furyu of Hiei from Yu Yu Hakusho. Here in the Philippines, we grew up calling him Vincent from Ghost Fighter. Um, this was way smaller than what I was expecting because I was uh, used to like the size of price figures and this is definitely smaller than that. But the details of this figure is amazing. He looks fine in his tank top. Um, there's also a Kurama figure that goes with this. And it's supposed to let you recreate a scene, but I don't remember where this scene's from. Um, so I didn't bother getting the Kurama figure. Um, this does not work well as a Noodle Stopper though. Um, I think Noodle Stopper figures where their feet are kind of hanging um, work better as actual Noodle Stoppers, but this is a, a really, really good figure. For how small it is, it's really, really detailed. And this figure is the figure of the legendary L from Death Note. Confession time, I got into Death Note through the live action movies and not the anime. I was able to watch the anime like way later on. Um, 
This is a figure by SFC or Super Figure Collection. I don't think they have a lot of figures out. Um, I think they have a Ryuk one, um, a Luffy one, and a bunch of My Hero Academia characters. Um, I love this figure because Al is in his iconic setting pose in this iconic chair, which I think is superbly done. Um, it really looks like it's a soft cushion um, that Al's sitting on. It has a good weight to it. Um, I do think that Al's face could be improved. Um, because in some angles, it does not look like L. Um, the best way to appreciate this figure is if it's if you're looking down at it this way, um, where you don't see his full face. It really looks like L. But in some angles, it sometimes it does not look like L and kind of looks creepy <laughs> sometimes, which I think is one of the reasons why I put it back in the box <laughs> and exchange it to for something else to display on my desk um, and yeah um, I think that it's a really good price for what you're getting I got this for around maybe $22 I think um, I got this from Geek Freaks PH and I think you can still get this from them at that price um, I own a few more figures that are not anime figures but I thought I'd share them anyway since they are technically part of my collection. I have a couple of Pop Marts. Pop Marts are usually released in a set of blind boxes. If you are interested in a specific figure from the set then there are sellers who sell them separately. Um, Pop Marts usually come with a card inside the individual blind boxes which lets you know what is inside the sealed package so that's how sellers know um, which figure is inside um, you do have to pay a higher amount <laughs> um, for them and uh, compared to what they would retail for uh, if you bought them as an actual blind box um, so this is the first one that I got. It's Hello Kitty from the 45th anniversary. And these are the figures that you could get. Um, also in, in a set of Pop Marts, there sometimes is a Chase one, which is like a rare figure. So if you do get one and you don't like it, you can always sell it for a, a pretty penny. <laughs> Uh, but this one is the one that I got. Um, this is the card that I was mentioning a while ago. So each individual blind box would come with this, comes with this and shows you what figure is inside. And this is the figure that I got. Let's take out the figure so you can see it better. So this is Hello Kitty two, year 2007B design. That's what's on the box. Um, so I'm not a Hello Kitty fan, but when I saw this, I thought she looked so badass. She's all black, you know, with demon horns, wings, and a tail. She has her iconic bow. She's holding a heart and she has this big ass gold earring and a pink heart butt tattoo. <laughs> so I thought it was really cool, that's why I got it. And the other pop art that I have is this one. This is from the Disney Villains collection. And these are all the Disney Villains that you could get. And the one I chose was... Again, this is the card, and the one I chose is this one. And if you don't know who this is, it is Maleficent in her dragon form. So Maleficent is probably my favorite Disney villain 
tied with Cruella de Vil. But yeah, this figure is so cute. Um, I think Pop Marts kind of make them into younger versions of the characters, not just chibi, but they make them look like young, younger, like kids almost. Um, and I like the black and purple aesthetic because I think it goes well with the Hello Kitty one that I got. And the last figures I'll be showing in this video are Funko Pops. And yes, I do own Funko Pops. I don't own a lot and I just own um, common, common Funko Pops. Um, and they're just characters that I like um, that I can't get other figures for. <laughs> um, this first one is Darna. She is a Filipino superhero and I could argue she's the most popular Filipino superhero. So she does kind of resemble uh, Wonder Woman and kind of have the same powers. She can fly, she has super strength. Um, the only difference is um, she has a human alter ego who swallows a stone from space and then shouts Darna to become the superhero. So I got this because she is a Filipino superhero and it just, I guess, is part of my culture, almost, being Filipino, so I got this one. And um, the other Funko Pops that I have are, of course, of Jollibee. If you don't know what Jollibee is, Jollibee is the most popular Filipino fast food chain. And um, I think it's getting a lot of attention um, overseas as well. And it was my favorite, you know, restaurant growing up. I think every Filipino kid <laughs> loves Jollibee. So this is the first Jollibee Funko Pop. Um, Jollibee is in his iconic pose of welcoming you to the restaurant. Normally, you would see a statue at a Jollibee store of the Jollibee mascot in this pose. Um, I did not get this um, when it got released. Um, I just bought it off from Shopee because at that time I didn't really care for Funko Pops or collecting figures. So I just kind of missed out on this one. So I got it and it actually came with a pop protector, which is kind of nice. The next um, Jollibee Funko Pop that I have is the Jollibee wearing a barong, which is the national dress of the Philippines. And I say dress because it can be worn by male or female. Um, it's not ex exclusively for males anymore. So yeah, he has his thumbs up and it's a pretty nice um, nod to Filipino culture with this pop. The next pop that I have is a two-pack um, Funko Pop. Um, this is of Jollibee and Hetty, which is one of the other uh, remaining <laughs> Jollibee mascots. Jollibee had like a lot of mascots back in the day when I was young. Um, I actually had dolls of them, but I kind of just kind of destroyed them because I drew fangs and whatever on them. I don't know what I did <laughs> when I was young. But um, Hetty was one of the original characters. She kind of looked way different um, back then. Um, she did have the same um, colored hair and style, but um, she kind of had some red accents um, to kind of represent the sauce or the meat stuff that's in the spaghetti. But I guess they chose to remove that in the newer design of her. Um, oh, so here she is in this cheerleading outfit, I would want to say. And then Jollibee is holding a bucket of Chicken Joy, which is Jollibee's famous fried chicken. And yeah, um, I got this directly from my Jollibee store when it got released. So yeah. And the last Jollibee Funko Pop that I have, I don't know if there's any more because I'm not <laughs> pretty updated with Funko Pops, but this is the last one that I got. It is a pop ride of Jollibee riding a Jollibee delivery bike. 
This one I also got from Shopee because I couldn't avail of the promo of this by delivery when, when it came out. So I just bought it um, from Shopee. That's why it has a protector again. So that's all my current figures, guys. Thank you for watching till the end. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. I'll be sharing all the figures and possibly merch that I get moving forward. And I'll be uploading unboxing videos in the future as well. Uh, so please do consider subscribing and um, comment down below if you have any of the figures that I currently have or if you're planning to get any of them or if you have any questions. So that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye! Thank you.